Hi, welcome to Animation Recap Center. This movie is about a young girl called Mary Catherine, nickname MK, who discovers a world inhabited by tiny strange creatures in the forest near her scientist father's home. These creatures were smarter than human. Soon, she gets involved into a battle between tiny good creatures called Leafmen, led by Queen Tara and evil creatures called Boggins, led by Mandrake. Queen Tara is the life of all green forest, but Boggins are evil and they live in an island of rot, and they thought that green forest is hideous and dangerous for them. So they want to rot and destroy the green forest to expand their kingdom. But if the queen lives, it is not possible to achieve their evil desire. Anyway, movie's story starts in the forest as three crows chase a hummingbird. A man named Mr. Scientist uses a camera installed in the forest to track the chase. He also uses binoculars to view and then runs after the birds. The hummingbird falls down after the assault and Mr. Scientist catches it and closely inspects it. Later, in the forest evil creatures called Boggins riding on crows, chase after a leafman soldier called Nod. Other leafmen, named Ronan, leader of leafmen, appear to rescue him but Nod declines. A crow grabs him and flies, but when Ronan, the head of the leafmen noticed that Nod is attacked by Boggins and he fight with Boggins to save Nod. Basically Nod's father was Ronan's best friend, unfortunately his father is no more. Nod is somewhat stubborn and unruly, but, in all kind of situation, Ronan always helps him. Ronan tells him to get back to Moonhaven, their residence, and they leave him. Scenes shift to Mary Catherine, who travels to her father's house in a taxi. She was very hopeful about her father. Mary Catherine thinks her father is a semi-crazy man, who has been searching for the existence of tiny creatures in the forest for years. So, she is going to her father to take him back to normal life from here. At last, she arrives and knocks on the door but she finds no one. Then she moves in with her briefcase. At this point, her father appears but is busily searching through books. He hugs her happily when he notices her saying she looks exactly like her mother. Their old dog, Yuzi also appears and MK was very surprised to see the dog. Because long ago the dog lost a leg in an accident, and its chances of survival were greatly reduced. But now it is used to walking on three legs, and runs around playfully. Her father welcomes her to her childhood room. As they talk, one of his alarm sensors rings and her father talks of his busy schedule, mentioning a full moon and summer solstice which coincide only once in a hundred years, and leaves her to settle in. She picks up a portrait of her and her mother and reminisces of how she vowed to try hard. MK's father watches with forest cameras. Three leafmen ride hummingbirds through the forest as they arrive in Moonhaven, a beautiful place where different creatures reside as the people eagerly watch as the leafmen fly past them. Finally, Ronan, head of the leafmen, meets Queen Tara, the queen of the forest watching beautiful flowers. He tells her about how the Boggins plan on stopping her from choosing an heir, and they already enter into their border. He asks the queen to send soldiers to grab a pot instead of having the ceremony, since the Boggins are aggressive. But the queen says that she has to be there to feel the pods. Ronan insists that looking after the queen is his duty and she agrees, and says she must choose an heir today since it is a once in a hundred years moment to protect their future. Mandrake's son, Dagda heads back to his father, the leader of the Boggins, and jokingly explains of their conflict with the Leafmen. Mandrake asks him whether he found the location of the Leafmen ceremony. He is disgusted that the Leafmen keep the Boggins and their Rotland contained and surrounded by hideous forest. All in the name of balance and that the queen regrows the forest. Mandrake and his son Dagda then plan to kill the queen and prevent further life growth leaving them to rule a desiccated kingdom. Nod later arrives to find Ronan who sends him to his group. But Nod refuses and leaves riding a bird. The Leafmen carry the queen's barge with hummingbirds as she rides to find a pot. It was an incredibly beautiful scenery, and everyone around was fascinated watching the journey of the beautiful queen. MK's father falls from a tree trying to get a camera. He explains to his daughter that he uses the cameras as an extensive network to monitor the entire forest. MK says her mom told her that her father has a delusional belief of tiny people living in the woods, causing him to lose his career and marriage. Her father, however, says he can prove their existence with sound records. He says they are unseen since they move too fast like insects living faster in a different dimension. His daughter is unconvinced and wants her dad to stop his work and be normal. Her dad receives an alarm and as he leaves his daughter at the middle of that conversation to attend to his research. His daughter packs and plans to leave the house in the forest. However, Yuzi their dog, runs off into the forest forcing her to run after him. She arrives at the middle of the jungle in search of the dog. On the other hand, the queen's convoy arrives at the pods and she alights wearing a white dress, and walks on the leaves on water. A flower girl and her mother watch the queen in admiration as she tells her mother of her wish to be a queen in the future. They talk about how the queen will give her powers to a special pod, so the life of the forest continues. The queen finds two pod guardians, a slug named Mub and a snail named Grub, and then she asks them to help her to choose a paw. They choose one for her, but she surprisingly refuses and chooses a smaller one. 
Ronan notices a flower rotting indicating an attack from the Boggins. They reveal themselves and run and asks the queen to get to her barge. The leafmen fight the Boggins as they attack the queen's barge. The queen runs with the pot in her hand chased by the Boggins. The leafmen try to help her, but are overwhelmed by their sheer number. Mandrake and his son Dagda plan on taking the pot and the queen. The Baggins continue to chase the queen and she leaves the flower girl with Ronan. She leads the Boggins away, and later is helped onto a hummingbird by Ronan. They escape but are chased by Boggins. Ronan shoots an arrow through Mandrake's son Dagda and Dagda dies, but, unfortunately, the queen is also shot in the combat. The weather turns dark as she falls down from the sky. As MK wanders in the forest, the queen falls by her side and releases a magical light from the pod which MK catches. The magic whirls her around and she lands as a tiny person finding the queen injured seriously. The queen charges her to take the pod to Nimgalu, the scroll keeper. A few seconds later, Ronan arrives there and it was heartbreaking for him to see the forest queen in such a condition. A few moments later, Queen Tara dies in Ronan's hands as her sparks ascend to the sky. Ronan charges the leafmen to fortify the pod from Mandrake and the Boggins. MK is amazed by the forest creatures and after a while, she eventually realizes that she is now tiny and becomes astonished and anxious. Later, they advance with Ronan, the head of the leafmen, and the two podkeeper slugs to find Nim is charged by the queen. Ronan finds Nod under threat from a frog after he failed their agreement, and rescues him informing him of the queen's death. He offers to go with them to Nimgalu. On the other hand, MK's father comes back from the forest followed by Yuzi. But he realizes that his daughter has left the house, and she left a letter for him. Mr. Scientist was very sad to see this. On the other hand, Ronan, MK, and Nod approach the rotten forests. Now, they have to pass through rotten jungle to reach Nimgalu. Nod tries to move through, but hundreds of Boggins appear forcing them to escape through other tunnels with the help of Ronan. Mandrake forces the frog to tell him where Ronan and others are taking the pod. By the way, at last, Ronan and company arrive at Nimgalu's place, the wise old man of the forest who lives in the wood of a tree. They find others seeking answers from Nim regarding the queen. Nim then appears in a dance and explains to the people the contents of his scrolls. Afraid of telling people of the queen's death, he runs off but bumps into Ronan. MK presents the queen's pod to Nim and he takes them to research it. They arrive at the Rings of Knowledge, a place where all happenings are recorded in scrolls. Nim reads one scroll which states that the pod is to bloom at night in the light of the full moon at its highest peak. MK tells Nim that she is not from this world, and Nim offers her a scroll. She blows its dust and visual images of the queen appear. She asks her to make her human but the queen tells MK that the pod needs her and she is there for a reason. She tells her to be there when the pod blooms and she will get back what she is given. Nim tells the people that the queen is gone but comforts them that when the pod blooms, a new queen will rise. Ronan then tells Nod to guard the gate, and to always be on the lookout. Whatever happens, Ronan forbade Nod to leave the gate. But in the next scene, we see Nod takes MK on an adventure where they ride a giant deer. They were so happy and unconscious that they totally forgot about the danger. By the way, Nim and Ronan send a message to the leafmen that they are bringing home the pot. However, Mandrake disrupts the party and then he attacked there and snatched away the pot. Ronan gets very angry with Nod because he told him to stay with Pod. Then, Ronan and his company plan to disguise and sneak into the Boggins' place. And MK says that she can help and then she wants to take them to find Boggin armor at her father's place cause her father found something from strange tiny creatures. On the other side, Mandrake explains that he wishes to bloom the pawn in darkness to gain power. And to bring back his son as the Darkness Prince to destroy the forest as is recorded in a remaining part of the scrolls. Basically, Mandrake was shocked at his son's death and he wants to take revenge. Meanwhile, MK takes the Leafman to her house and they begin to search for her father's Boggins' armor. They watch Mr. Scientist as Ronan and Nod recognize him as the man obsessed with finding them. They started mocking and laughing at him as human is too slow compared to them. However, MK reveals that the man is her father. She keeps calling her father for help, but her father doesn't notice her, because Mary Catherine is now a tiny and little girl. MK's father sat over her disappearance. However, the dog begins to chase her around and Mr. Scientist notices that. He uses his binoculars to see the three of them running and uses a vacuum pipe to blow in and capture them. Eventually he can manage to catch Mary Catherine. Realizing that it's his daughter, he is shocked and falls unconscious on the floor leading them to escape. They wear disguises and sneak into the evil forest with other Boggins to find where Mandrake holds the slugs in the pod. They move through a cave of bats and Ronan shows them the exit and takes off his disguise. The Boggins chase him as Nod and MK find Nob and Grub. They pull the slugs out of their hole, but the guards notice them escaping and chase them. As Ronan is running, he runs into Mandrake and they begin to fight. Mandrake notices the others escaping with the pod and summons an army of Boggins after them. Ronan remains to fight the overwhelming forces as the others escape. They fly back to reunite with the Leafmen, and explain that Ronan was captured. Together, they head back to find Nimgalu who happily welcomes them. 
They march toward the arena for the blooming ceremony, and Nim places the pod on the altar where the moonlight reaches. Ronan and MK begin to say farewell as the moonlight lights up the pod. However the process is, is disrupted by Mandrake's bats which block the moonlight. The pod grows darker and the leafmen move in unison to engage the large swam of bats. MK then decides to ask for her father's help. MK appears in front of her father's cameras but her father fails to notice her since he plans to quit everything. She sees Yuzi, and it leads her father marching toward her and CMK. With the help of his gadgets to communicate, she asks him to help them. The leafmen fight with Mandrake's forces and he moves in to capture Nim. Mandrake then heads to the blooming pod but is stopped by Ronin, and they fight again. MK plays the sounds on his father's sound gadget which disrupts the bats causing them to scatter from the moonlight. Nod and other leafmen appear and save Ronin from Mandrake. The bats clears and the moonlight shines and the pod begins to bloom in light. The leadmen kick out Mandrake into the rot. Later, after the pod blooms there is a light blast and his drops of rainfall. Plants and flowers regain their vitality. As sparks of light float from the pod, the queen appears and appoints the flower girl, who is always her admirer to take care of the forest as she is the next queen. They all bow to their new queen but MK notices she is still tiny saying she missed her chance. The new queen then uses her power and turns MK back to human. Nod hugs and kisses MK as she turns and she later floats away. As her father is heading back home looking at a picture of his family, MK appears and they both hugged each other. Back at the house, MK and her father draw pictures of the leafmen as Yuzi plays around the house. She answers a call from Nod who is over the forest cameras as he and Mub jokingly argue over their affairs with MK. MK, her father and their dog Yuzi, joyfully head out to the forest to talk with their leafmen friends which brings an end to the fascinating movie. So, what do you think? Can tiny creatures really exist? Tell me in comment section. That's for today. Thanks for enjoying.